ground. I only got back into container gardening this year and I've been, it's a little bit mixed results, but today is the day where it all comes ahead. The whole reason why I started it is to, for today. Today is moving day. Let me show you what's going on here. So this is an area where I had my watermelons growing and it just got like crazy overgrown and I couldn't keep up with it. You can still see there's a watermelon plant right there, but it's not really doing much. And you can see here, it's about noon and we're in the shade, right? That's not very good for this time of year. But if we look all the way over there, you can see that it's all sun. That's the whole reason why I started a container garden. I really wanted to start something over here in this area, back by the greenhouse where in the spring it gets plenty of sun, but as the time moves on and the, and the weeks move on and we start getting later in the year, I can now move my garden into a better place. I thought I was gonna have to break out Cletus for this, but I don't think it's quite time to unveil Cletus too the YouTube universe yet. These are some peppers that I have here. And you can see that they're, they're still doing pretty good. You know, they're not excellent, but they're not terrible either. This is an eggplant. And let me, let me tell you this life story of this eggplant real quick. So a couple weeks ago, I came out here and there was not a single leaf left on this eggplant whatsoever. And it's been growing back here and been doing well. And when I looked at it, I saw that there is this huge tomato worm on it. The biggest one I've ever seen, tomato hornworm. And technically, yes, it's a tobacco hornworm, but I call them all the same. And you can tell them apart if you see the little spike on the end of them, that's a tobacco hornworm. But I don't grow tobacco, nobody around me grows tobacco. so. I just call them tomato hormones. Anyways, I picked it up and it I mean it was attacking me. It was trying, I don't think it can bite, but it was so big, I was legit a little bit nervous. But this whole plant was completely empty of leaves. And I mean, now look at it. You say it was empty of leaves, but it's starting to bud. We've got more flowers. And like I said in the last video that I released, you know, this is the time of year where these heat loving plants really thrive in my area where it's just hot, it's humid. And if I can get it from away from this shade and into the sun, then I'm gonna rejuvenate this plant and get more growth out of it. So I wanna check and make sure that something that I thought would happen is happening. And when I put them on the wood on the shelf over there, I was hoping that the moisture from it would cr help create roots to come down to the bottom. And when I look at it, on this eggplant right here, you can see that the roots indeed are coming out of the bottom. So that's a good sign. So what that means is I can just take this plant right here and just set it on the ground. And for the next month, the roots will have an opportunity to go back into the ground. Did you see that? And the bug tried to attack me. It literally tried to kill me allow it to go in the ground so what I need to do is check all of these plants and see because if that's the case then I don't need to move the shelf over unfortunately that one's not doing it which I didn't expect much from it I mean like it's obviously been struggling and then this one oh it's got one root coming out of the bottom I'm gonna use that to our advantage and again I'll probably set that one on the ground because what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna move all of those over here it doesn't really matter to me how sickly they are I still want to move them all over. Look, that one's got roots coming out of it. Another one. Oh yeah, we got some good roots coming out of this one. So we'll take this one as well. So we'll stake it up. Fully anticipated everything that I put in the plants to do exactly what they, in the pots, to do exactly what they did and grow strong over the spring. And then not so good in, later in the summer as the sun got lower and lower. That's just part of every year me doing a different test. I like that I can move these around, find a better spot for them. And this spot over here, the sunniest spot that I'm willing to grow in my yard. Um, I can't grow in the middle of my yard because I sit on the septic tank. And then over here, you know, flowers and stuff like that. I've got some raspberry bushes that I planted this year. I'm gonna come back in the winter and I'm actually gonna build the trellises for the raspberries. 
And when that happens, I can now take a step back and look and say like, hey, do I really wanna grow out here in the spring and fall in the container garden right here? And just have something because I've set it up so there's a little bit of overlap for my sprinkler on my bonsai bench, which I'll show you real quick. This is my bonsai bench and I have this sprinkler over here. You can barely see the head and it sprays out this way and comes to about right here. And so this whole section here is a section that I'm going to be working on over the next year, trying to kind of beautify and improve Do something like this, maybe just see exactly what I can add into my garden. You know, if, if I can make another container garden in here, great, I'll do it. And if I decide to do so, then I need to get some more containers and which I like to use these nursery pots. And I just get them from buying plants. But also what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask them if I can jump in their dumpster and get some because I'd like to get bigger ones. But by me putting them on the ground like this, it helps them, one, it'll help ease the watering on me because the roots will get into the ground. They'll find the ground and they'll be able to kind of water themselves essentially. But it also helps with heat stress because it's lower to the ground. So it'll help dissipate the heat through the earth. The universe was upset with me because it thought I was getting rid of the milk crate mafia. But the milk crate mafia is back and so everything that has a root on it coming out of the bottom is going to get stuck right on the ground so this is kind of like my last ditch effort to try and make things better with that little container garden situation and what i'm going to do is i mean i want to give them the best opportunity to make it i'm going to try and improve the status of some of these plants some of them i just let go because like eh, you know i'm not really worried about it but at this point I feel like I still have time and it's worth for this test to see if this actually works to where I can kind of get things started and get them more set up to be successful in their final leg of their journey for the year. And I know you've seen, you saw some of them and some people probably gasped when they saw it and they were like, oh my gosh, it's fallen over. Well, it was fallen over, but we're gonna try and rectify that situation. And I have some bamboo here. I have it growing on my property. It's very invasive but I'm gonna cut it so I can make steaks. Same thing you buy at the store, essentially. So I'm just gonna cut it in half, and then this way I can take it and stake it up and then give everything a better opportunity to grow and be healthier. It is a Jimmy Nordella, and ooh boy, is it rough, but it's got a fully ripened pepper on it and like 10 leaves. So I'm curious to see how much this plant rebounds over the next 30 to 60 days as we finish out the season. But I can tell you this, and this is a big part too, pulling this off. This will allow the energy to stop coming here and then go back to the leaves. Now I won't clip it to make it bush out because at this point there's no, no reason, but just getting the sun here alone will help straighten it out. Sweet, perfect for frying. Now in the next garden tour I do, I'll keep you guys up to date on this, but I wanna show you kind of what I'm working with here in this space. And then maybe you can kind of come up with a, a little bit better plan over the winter for this space. It's been real hit or miss and we're in the process of cleaning out the brush. But if you look, we have one, two, three, right there. Those are all um, raspberries. So we're gonna build a little trellis system right there. I'm gonna put a little bush right here of some sort, probably like a boxwood or something. But then back in here from this tree line up is like the question of what can we put in that area. It's the true power of growing in containers, honestly, in my opinion, is the ability to move them around as needed. Now, if you start getting 50 to 100 containers, it's obviously gonna be a little bit more difficult to move. But if we do just a handful and you can move them around, that is the true power because then you can maximize your sun in your growing season and get as much as possible. Side note, check that out. I think we have officially hit the 25 foot mark for the butternut squash this year.